Hi, Jan Markell here. So glad that Pastor Josh Schwartz and Ken Michael are our representatives. They've been traveling the country for, well, some time now, and they're going to be doing weekly updates, helping you understand the times right here. Again, if you'd like to have Pastor Josh or Ken visit your church, go through our website, won't you? So I hope you look forward to these weekly updates presented again, Pastor Josh Schwartz and Ken Michael. They truly are helping everyone understand the times, contend for the faith, and be a watchman on the wall. Well, welcome to Understanding Our Times, the program where we look at current events that are happening in the country and around the world. I'm Ken Michael, and joining me as always is Pastor Josh Schwartz. Josh, welcome. Great to be here, Ken. So today we're going to look at a few things that are happening. We're going to start out in Israel with the Israeli-Hamas war. And what we're seeing going on over there is some hostages are being released, and that's always a good thing. Uh, we're seeing the families that are, have been devastated by the loss of, of family members. Uh, we're also seeing the propaganda that is being waged uh, by Hamas. And at the same time, we're also seeing uh, the ceasefire being violated by Hamas and their, and their proxies. So there's a lot going on over there. And uh, I want to show you a, just a quick clip uh, of what happened the other day with the President of the United States. Uh, first making a, an appropriate comment and then backing off of that comment. So let's take a quick look at this. But now, according to a new report, the president appears to be caving to some of that left-wing pressure, apologizing for a remark he made expressing totally understandable skepticism of the death toll numbers from the Gaza Health Ministry, an agency which sounds official but is actually run by Hamas. During a news conference uh, late last month, he made clear he takes any numbers coming from Hamas with a big grain of salt. I have no notion that the Palestinians are telling the truth about how many people are killed. But the very next day, according to a new report from the Washington Post, the president met privately with five prominent Muslim Americans who told him he was being insensitive by questioning the civilian death toll put out by Hamas. And the president was apologetic, telling the group, quote, I'm sorry, I'm disappointed in myself. I will do better. So here we saw the president making, at first, an appropriate statement and then backing down off of that statement. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But uh, in relationship to what's going on over there, people are, are asking, you know, what's going to happen to Israel? And I just want to share with you a, a verse. I want to share with you uh, Proverbs 2.21, uh, Proverbs 2.21 and 22. For the upright will dwell in the land, and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth, and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. So I think this is an appropriate verse. Uh, it, it's very relevant. We're going to see that, that Israel isn't going anywhere. Nothing permanent is going to happen to them as a result of what we're seeing now. Um, but Pastor Josh, we, we did see some good things happen this week. We saw some of the hostages being released and then being reunited with their families. I just want to show you this quick video and we'll comment while it's being shown, but it, it shows the, the family being reunited with their, with their family pet. And I mean, it was just a heartwarming uh, video to watch as, as these families are reunited. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it, uh, amid all the evil and darkness that we're seeing, there is hope. I mean, we've got real people who are really affected by this, children with pets and normal families. And we have to understand that historically, as you work through the scriptures, Israel has always taken care of its captives. When someone is taken hostage from their nation, they go out and rescue them. Um, you see this in Genesis chapter 14, when Lot is taken captive and how Abraham goes all the way north to tell Dan to rescue Lot. We see it in 1 Samuel chapter 30 when um, David has his wives taken captive and their families. They mourn, they seek God, and they run after them to rescue them. 
and they take care of the evil. They destroy the evil. Now, what we have to keep in mind here, what's happening in、uh, Israel is this: Israel's not out to kill Palestinians. Israel is out to root the evil of Hamas, the terrorism, away. It has to be destroyed because eventually the ceasefire is going to come to an end. It has to. If there's just one Hamas flag left in Gaza, it does seem as though Palestinians died in vain, Israelis died in vain. There has to be a, a rooting out of Hamas, a rooting out of evil. And friends, as that comes in the upcoming days, maybe even weeks, as followers of Jesus, we have to continue to verbally and spiritually support. Israel and spiritually, I mean, we have to pray for them, because the world is going to, when Israel goes back to defend itself some more and to cast out Hamas from Gaza, the world is going to turn on them, and we cannot, we cannot turn our backs on Israel, because God does have future salvific promises that He'll make to them, and He has future land promises that He will fulfill to Israel. We have to keep this in mind, and we have to continue to support the people of Israel. Absolutely, and Hamas is the—they、um, just—they manipulate their children. So、uh, it, it's so sad to watch what they do to their children. And we talked about this last week. What we're doing right here in America to our children, and I blame a lot of、uh, the adults.、Uh, a lot of the secular world is teaching our children、uh, not only to hate but to be violent. And I just want to share with you、uh, some some articles, some recent articles that、uh, came out of Minneapolis. The Minneapolis Teachers Union、uh, is in favor of repealing a resolution that that、uh, disallowed the BDS movement, and they want to reverse that in the legislation, claiming that it、uh, suppresses Palestinian speech and their rights. And we're seeing Jewish parents being outraged,、uh, and other citizens calling the Minnesota Teachers Union、uh, a hostile and anti-Semitic、uh, organization, which they、uh, apparently are and, and appear to be. And this is going on in schools all over the nation. This isn't just uh, uh, an isolated is- incident.、Uh, I want to read you a-, a disturbing article that just came out of New York here recently,、uh, last week. Uh, high school students in Queens, New York, banded together in protest against a teacher who allegedly attended a pro-Israel rally, and then hundreds, 400, as we found out at Hillcrest High School, protested for two hours. Think about this, causing the educator, the teacher, to lock herself in a classroom. And I'm going to show you a video because the School officials there kind of tried to downplay it, even though they backed the teacher up, which they should have.、Mm-hmm. They kind of downplayed that there were only a small percentage of students out of that school of twenty five hundred. Well, four hundred is a lot of students, and just check out this video, and you can just see that not only in college campuses we're seeing this, but now it's drained down to high school level. So I'm just going to show you this quick video of what took place there last week. Tonight, videos capturing moments of chaos in the halls of this New York City public school. Students marching through Hillcrest High School in Queens, phones out recording as they dance in a circle and wave Palestinian flags. The reason that teacher was targeted: this image, which circulated on social media in the days prior. Allegedly showing her at a rally supporting Israel. The teacher at Hillcrest High School was targeted based on her support for Israel. New York City Mayor Eric Adams calling the video of the protest a quote vile show of anti-Semitism, motivated by ignorance fueled hatred, plain and simple. City Councilwoman Vicky Palladino is calling for the school to be shut down pending a full investigation. <laughs> Palladino releasing the cell phone video. Of a separate, unrelated incident at the very same school just days earlier, a fight between three students erupting into an all-out brawl. Students seen beating a uniformed security officer as his colleague tried to pull them away. We could not simply allow this entire school body to be demonized. We have to be careful in the way we talk about our children as well. So, unfortunately, this is becoming commonplace in our schools across the nation. We're seeing this. All over in, in school after school, these incidents, 
In the incident you just saw, uh, school security officials were being assaulted, uh, school resources that showed up, school resource officers that showed up at the scene were assaulted. Uh, and this is becoming normalized, and that's the problem. The, the oppressed, as they say, are the, are the victims of this instead of the actual victims. And unfortunately, I fear we're going to see uh, more and more of this uh, taking place uh, as, as it ramps up, as, we're, as we as a nation allow this to happen. I know when I was a school resource officer, we would have never allowed this to take place uh, in, in any setting. Yeah, and what we see, Ken, is just, it's restless evil. Um, the Bible tells us exactly uh, that. He, it, Paul tells us in the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 19, he shows us what the works of the flesh are. The works of the flesh, he says, are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envies, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Paul says, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why will they not inherit the kingdom of God? Because it is pure, unadulterated, evil, and sin. Jesus himself tells us in Matthew, or Mark, excuse me, chapter 7, that uh, we sin by nature and by choice. Listen to this. Mark 7, beginning in verse 20, says this. What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. Jesus, is, Jesus says all these th evil things come from within and they defile a person. And when a person is defiled, they do nothing but evil because of their sin nature. And it separates us. And this is what we're seeing. We're seeing restless evil near and abroad. Absolutely. Well, finally, our final story today. Uh, as we talk about all these things that are happening in this country and around the world, uh, a lot of it's focused on Israel and Hamas and some of the violence that we're seeing as a result of that. But as we've stated in programs earlier, uh, evil pushes forward. It never stops. And the things that this ministry has been dealing with and talking about and warning our listeners about, those things continue to push forward. And the last story I want to share with you it involves China. And I want to share with you recently what the World Health Organization has called for. They're calling for a masking up of China, physical distancing over this mystery illness that has popped up recently. And this is a statement from the World Health Organization. They're telling their citizens to wear face masks, keep physical distance, stay home amid the outbreak, uh, just like they did with COVID. Uh, and they first announced this outbreak uh, on November 13th. So they're warning their citizens that something's coming up. Uh, the World Health Organization, our government, as you see, are, are also warning uh, there's us, here in the United States that another pandemic is coming. But I want to read an article that, that just came up. And this, I, as I've been going out and speaking at conferences and churches, I've been uh, warning people that this pandemic situation isn't over. And I just want to read what took place here recently in Northern California. There was a lab that was uh, located uh, recently, and it was operated by a Chinese dissident who is part of the Communist Party. And finally, the House Select Committee Committee on Chinese on the Chinese Communist Party, uh, assisted by Representative Mike Gallagher and Representative Jim Costa, uh, this report reveals that a lab was likely there to cover fraud and government-aided economic espionage. Well, as we're finding out. Not only is this going to be, have an economic impact, but there were viruses in this lab that should not have been there, that were not sanctioned. In fact, um, recently, uh, the person that operated this, this Mr. Zhu, uh, faced legal trouble in Canada and actually operated under a false identity there and in the United States. And the report uncovered that he set up a similar unlicensed facility in Fresno, California, before moving it to Reedley, California, where the operation was finally located. 
The CDC finally arrived at this lab in May of 2023, this year, six months after the initial discovery, finding at least 20 potentially infectious agents. And what they found there, unfortunately, were they were working on viruses such as HIV, COVID, chlamydia, rubella, Ebola, and things of this nature. I mean, outrageously dangerous viruses that have got, if got loose, they would affect everyone, not just in California, but all over the United States. So I want to show you the warning that our government is giving us uh, about what's coming next. And they're telling us there is going to be another pandemic. We don't just need more money for vaccines for children eventually. We need more money to plan for the second pandemic. There's going to be another pandemic. Eventually, what we'll have to have is certificates of who's a recovered person, who's a vaccinated person, because you don't want people moving around the world where you'll have some countries that won't have it under control. Sadly, you don't want to completely block off the ability for those you know, people to go there and come back and move around. People to go there and come back and move around. So eventually there will be sort of this digital uh, immunity proof. And the great Tony Blair is at Davos. He is rumored to want now to take over from Klaus Schwab as the boss of it. Here were some words of advice from Tony Blair today. In the end, you, 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 you need the data you need to know who's been vaccinated and who hasn't been. Some of the vaccines that will come on down the line will be multiple, there'll be multiple shots. So you've got to have, for, for reasons to do with the healthcare more generally, but certainly for a, a pandemic or for, um, for, for vaccines, you've got to have a proper digital infrastructure. And many countries don't have that. In fact, most countries don't have that. We need to step up the campaign to reassure them that vaccination is sensible and they're much more at risk of COVID than they are of any problems resulting from vaccination. So there he is, there's Tony Blair. He wants us to have multiple shots and for all of it to be digitized so the state knows exactly what our status is. Pure evil is all I can say. So you're seeing global leaders past and present uh, warning of the uh, coming pandemic. So they're warning us and the Bible also warns us what's coming. Yeah, you saw it there on the screen from Luke chapter 21, verse 11. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences, and there'll be terrors and great signs from heaven. We know that this world is coming to a climax of ultimate total deception and destruction with brokenness abounding, pestilences, famines, earthquakes, sword, everything. And we're seeing it ramping up day by day, friends. And so we were seeing, and they finally, uh, it was only by chance that they found this unlicensed bio lab in California. And uh, this report, like I said, was not only to cover up the fraud that's going on uh, in, in China, but I believe it was a bio lab set up to not only test these viruses, but to possibly unleash them. We saw what China did uh, before with COVID and now we're seeing them still working on it. So how can a bio lab in the United States be allowed to happen unlicensed and no one knew about it? Where is the money coming from and where are the actual viruses coming from to do these experiments? So this was a lab that was uncovered uh, recently, like I said, and the CDC finally arrived, like I said, in May, six months after this, and discovered these. So this is what took place, and this is how they discovered this finally. It was only by chance that they even discovered the lab. So let's take a look at this. Investigators discovering a horrific scene in suburban California. An illegal bio lab reportedly backed by communist China has been operating under the radar in Fresno. 30 refrigerators and freezers, some broken, were found filled with bodily fluids. Health officials tell us they are shocked at the biological house of horror. Now what prompted this investigation was a simple garden hose that was illegally attached and coming out 
of the back of a building. This is a, a truly unusual situation. I've been in government for 25 years. I have never seen anything like this. I never have seen this in my 26 year career with the county of Fresno. According to court documents, experts determined that at least 20 potentially infectious, viral, bacterial, and parasitic agents were being stored inadequately, including E. coli, malaria, and even COVID. At this point, what we do know is that it was operating illegally. Uh, it poses a threat to the people of uh, California and the United States. Uh, they were testing uh, for COVID and like you said, AIDS and everything else. And uh, and then the the rats and the mice there, uh, 200 of them were, were found uh, dead out of a thousand, uh, all kinds of, of medical equipment and medical testing equipment and uh, human blood. Uh, and, uh, and they were testing for a lot of agents. So we don't know what they were doing or why they were doing it, but uh, apparently they're tied to the CCP and, uh, and to Chinese linked firms. Uh, uh, it's no secret that, you know, they tried to hide for a long time that the, that the Wuhan lab was not uh, the cause of, of uh, you know, the uh, you know, COVID-19 uh, when in fact, in all probability, 99% uh, it was. So folks, our ministry has been warning people about this for a couple of years now. And as I said, as I've been going out to churches and conferences across the country, uh, we've been trying to send the message that ch what China is up to. And I just want to give you uh, a quick look at how diabolical their plan is right now. Um, this is from the president, Xi Jinping. We must dominate the biotech industry to achieve our goals for the fourth industrial revolution. So China is totally hooked into the World Economic Forum. Klaus Schwab, Klaus and Xi Jinping are very good friends. And what they're doing is they're buying and gathering all the genetic data they can from other countries. So if you're giving your DNA over to these 23andMe and these other data collection agencies, do not do it because it's very likely that the Chinese are going to at some point buy this. So, and why are they buying it? That's the question. Well, they're gonna take each group and analyze it for abnormalities. And then they're gonna use these abnormalities to manipulate their genetic makeup to target certain groups. In other words, once they get the genetic makeup from an ethnic group or a racial group, they can isolate those figure out what the abnormalities are, and then create a virus to attack those. That's their plan. It's a very ingenious plan, but it's a very diabolical and evil plan. And what they've done now is they've placed the Uyghurs, uh, the Muslim group that is in China, in concentration camps, and they are the modern day Jews. They are experimenting on them right now as we speak. And what they wanna do when they can eliminate uh, these genomes they want to isolate them and then get rid of their enemies or what they say is eliminate the undesirable population and create the perfect human. In other words, the perfect communist or what they say, the perfect super soldier, the one that's going to follow their rules and follow their president uh, right up until uh, the time of death if need be. So that's their plan. And I just wanted to show you a quick clip of how this is gonna be manipulated. China has recognized the, not just the profit potential, but they recognize that biotechnology is basically, as the subtitle of the book suggests, it's the way that they can control life. Yeah. Because what they're gonna use is CRISPR-Cas9 to gene edit diseases into that particular population. And then they're gonna wipe them out without ever firing a shot. They're gonna wipe out all the non-Han, Chinese. That's what they're going for. It's and it's not going to just be in China. That's a proof okay, of concept. Okay, to refresh our recollection, yeah. Han is the dominant uh, yeah, race. Yeah, race in right. China. The so they want to get rid of the Tibetans. They want to get rid of the Falun Gong. They want to yeah. get rid of all the people who are ethnically less evolved in their eyes. So we're seeing evil at a level like I've never seen before. And even though we shouldn't be afraid, we shouldn't be anxious. Uh, this is one thing that should concern every human being on the planet because if they decide to unleash this, and, I, and many believe they unleash COVID on the world, uh, if they start targeting certain ethnic groups or, or racial groups, um, this could lead to a catastrophe. Absolutely. And these things are evil. These things are disastrous, They're diabolical. Uh, it's unfathomable to 
be able to think through, uh, in essence, designer viruses to be able to take out a specific people group. Exactly. And yeah. This is scary. And friends, we could walk away full of fear, but I don't think that that's what the Lord wants for us. Uh, as we know, there are hundreds of times within the scripture that we are told to be not afraid. And I want to bring our attention back to the scriptures again, to Psalm 56. David himself says this in Psalm 56, verse 3. He says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Do you realize that, yeah, fear assails and fear is at every turn, but it is a conscious decision to not fear and to trust God. Friends, when fear or anxieties overwhelm you, I want you to turn to Psalm 56, verse 3, and recognize that I am going to consciously trust, intentionally trust God. This is what David says. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I prize. In God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Friends, that is the question. What can flesh do to you? It can't destroy your soul. It can't destroy your eternality. God can. That's why we fear the Lord alone, because he is the one who has brought salvation, and he is the one who has brought Christ. Remember what Romans tells us. Romans 3, 23 says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us are broken. We see that out from without of our heart, the mouth speaks, and it is evil always. But it is through Jesus alone that we can have joy, peace, and strength, that we can have a heart transformation. When you've placed your faith in Jesus, you've been transformed. No longer are you bound to the works of the flesh, but you're bound to the works of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, which where uh, Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 5 that the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Friends, this is what we produce. We do not fear. We walk by faith. We trust in Jesus consciously and intentionally, first and foremost for salvation, but then also for provision as we faithfully walk in these dark days. Friends, I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to see what's happening. I want you to be prepared. I want you to be well set, but not afraid. So put your hope in Jesus, put your trust in Jesus, and consciously choose not to be afraid, but to walk by faith day by day and moment by moment. Well, amen to that. Well, that's it for this week. Make sure you go to our website, olivetreeviews.org. That's olivetreeviews.org. Download our app. Uh, make sure you check out Pastor Josh's prayer wall. There's uh, People are putting prayers up and they are being answered. So make sure you do that. All right. Well, thanks for watching this week. And may you walk with the Lord this week. Put, as Pastor Josh said, uh, put your faith and trust in him. And things are going to work out exactly how he wants it to uh, in these last days. Thank you.